Hi PC, hope you're doing well. I thought I'd have a go on this uh, reggae vinyl tag. I've seen, I think there's only been four that have been made. Um, people are moaning about vinyl tags, but I'm enjoying them. Uh, I really enjoyed Madam Sin, Paul, and that, uh, the stuff you showed yesterday was incredible. And uh, I really recommend that you guys go and watch that. It's just unbelievable, seven inches. And some original studio. I think the first studio one release as well, which is amazing to see. Anyway, I'm going to try and show stuff I haven't shown before. Um, there's one or two overlaps I have shown, but this is a uh, this is my version of it. I'll try to cover most of the questions, but I haven't got the list. So if I uh, forget, never mind. Don't matter, does it? This is where it all started for me. Then this is uh, the Perry. And this is the artist I've probably got most of actually. Although not the artist I live to listen to most of all. But yeah, this is Lee Perry's Reggae Greats. And I remember I got this from it's from a charity shop at the bottom of Fleet Street in Swindon in the early 90s I would say, probably about 1990-91. But yeah, this is an incredible record for me to find. Um, I hadn't heard much reggae before then, only stuff you heard on the radio. And uh, yeah, there isn't one Duff track on this, and I'm sure you're probably all familiar with this record. Um, there it is there. Okay, so yeah, Reggae Greats. It's kind of like your big intro to the, uh, to the Black Ark, Party Time, Police and Thieves. Some really good stuff on there, really good. Jar Lions Wisdom as well. So yeah, that's what started it all off for me, really. Um, right, there's a few seven inch singles. I've got quite a lot of reggae seven inches, but I just dug out, just grabbed a couple quick. Um, I think I've shown most of these before, these ones. This is Max Romeo, uh, Every Every Man Ought to Know from his uh, Revolution Time album, which was produced by Lee Perry. And uh, this is my favorite uh, record stamp ever. It says, uh, Monica's Cosmetic Hairdressing Salon, Records and Wigs. <laughs> So yeah, great, great stuff. And there's a version on the back from that Revelation, I said, from that Revelation Time album, which is probably one of my favourite reggae albums I've thought. Uh, next up, classic Heavenless Rhythm. Uh, there's uh, Johnny Osborne's Murderer, and there's a Murderer version on the back. Just brilliant, a rhythm that's been used so many times throughout reggae. I think Half Pint's Greetings is another example of it. And I think it was originally uh, recorded by Don Drummond, but um, is it Vin Gordon as well recorded it, and I think it was Languishing in the Vaults range just as well. And this one I showed a couple of years ago now, but this is just great if you want to get some really cheap King Tubby. Um, it's this one here, you've got, um, this is another festival, Jackie Edwards, and then on the flip is, this is another festival version, which if I'm right is a King Tubby mix, and it's one of his most joyous, joyous mixes of all. Um, the artists I've got, um, Second most of, which I'll have to show, of course, which I always show, is Keith Hudson. Um, probably my favourite reggae artist. And this is Torture Feet of Freedom, uh, mid-70s record there. And it's got Lost All Sense Direction on it. And uh, it's got that song that uh, Joy Division covered as well, New Order, Turn, was it? Um, Turn the Heater On. And that's an original, a bit battered, a couple of scratches on it. But yeah, it's a nice, nice record, that one. So I love Keith Hudson. I always go on about him, don't I? Uh, what we've got next then? A two tone record for everybody probably showing this. The specials. Um, hasn't got my favourite song by Specials on it though. My favourite song is um, Friday Night, Saturday Morning. It's my favourite song, which I think was the flip of uh, Ghost Town. But yeah, this is an original uh, pressing on two tone, so that's a lovely record, that one. Of course, Coventry's got the City of Culture this year, haven't they? Um, let's go for a 12 inch then. There's a nice 12 inch record here. This is uh, on Fashion Records. I don't think it's in the correct sleeve. But uh, yeah, this is a D sharps. Let's dub it up. Just a great, great song, and then uh, awesome versions on the back there as well. So yeah, got you can still pick these up for you know they're about four or five quid each, and they're well worth getting. They're just really good value for money, and there's some really good uh, sort of 80s um, reggae that you can get uh, British produced in London under underneath uh, Dub Vendor, wasn't it? Um, what else have I got? British reggae artists then. Uh, there's Carol Thompson, hopes to be in love. Great, great record. I've always really liked this cover as well. But yeah, it's just Lovers Rock and uh, yeah, lovely stuff, this one. So uh, yeah, I got this last year. Finally hunted down um, an original of that. Something on Island. I've already shown an Island release, but uh, yeah, how about The Way in the Souls? The long awaited follow up album. This is Wild Suspense. It's got Roe Fisherman on it. And this is a really good record, this one. Well worth getting. It always looks like it's ripped on the back, but it's part of the design. Yeah, really enjoy this record. It's well worth hunting it if you can find this one. Um, got some lovely sort of this, the production's sublime on it to be honest, but uh, really really good. But it's quite quirky as well in places. Weird sound effects. Trojan Records then. Um, let's do Mango first. <laughs> A release on Mango about Sweetie Irie, DJ of the future. It's all going on on this cover in there, but wait till you see the back. 
the great, great stuff, sort of the British fast track sort of DJ kind of stuff. Pretty good. Um, let's go for Trojan then. Uh, I've, got a lot, I've got most of the sort of Trojan issues. I've got quite a lot of stuff that Paul showed yesterday, like um, Harry Jane and all the rest of it, and a lot of the Titan Up series. But yeah, I wanted to show this one because this is the only record that I own by Bob Marley and the Wailers. Uh, I've got a lot of reggae, but I've, just, I've, I've owned records. I've had an Exodus and Burning. Uh, and I've had, I've had a, a repress of Catch a Fire, but yes, it's the only one I've got on vinyl. And it's, of course, this is the Lee Perry produced uh, sessions, and it's just, pro I think it's the best stuff they ever did. Uh, just really enjoy it. Uh, the production is quite sparse in places, quite quite um, atmospheric, and it's got just got Lee Perry's sort of like early touch all over this, I think, really. So, yeah, well worth getting. Of course, it's got all the classics on it that you go on to put onto the other album, so like Small Max, uh, Lively Up Yourself, and so on. Yeah. Just great sun is shining, all the rest of it. So yeah, well worth getting that. That's a Trojan, I think it's probably a real issue, that one from the early 90s. And I was buying most of my reggae, reggae, reggae in the early 90s. Um, right, album covers I love. Well, that's really hard, to be honest. Uh, I love that Hudson one, Keith Hudson one, the Torture Freedom one, but I've just got, I've got four here. Two, because they make me smile. And uh, I've got Jackie Matu's Mac of Fat from Studio One. Great, great record, and it's, I just love it. I just love the cover of it. As I've said before, I think at one point Studio One got very close to the uh, aesthetics of, uh, of Blue Note in their album covers. I think the best example is probably uh, Johnny Osborne's, um, one of Johnny Osborne's ones, I don't know what it's called now. Oh, Truth and Rights, that's, that's pretty good, an example of that. Yeah, there's Jackie Matu with uh, Macafat. Favourite Jackie Matu comp, of course, is the Soul Jazz one, that's great. Um, Lee Perry. Kung Fu meets the Dragon, Lee Perry. It's, it's kind of like a reggae sort of exploitation record, this really. Some Kung Fu effects in it. I, I don't think the record stands up as well as the cover does, to be honest. But uh, I know there's a lot of Lee Perry fans who adore this record. And it is funny, but yeah, the artwork's fantastic on it. This is a, must be about 90, early 90s reissues on that Justice League. They, did, they released uh, Musical Bones as well. And uh, there's another one they did as well. I can't remember that anymore. Um, Wailing Souls, I showed one earlier on, this is their first issue, their first release on Studio One. This is a repress from 1990-91 I think as well. But yeah, I just really love this record, I just I love the record, it's fantastic, it's untouchable almost. But I really love the photo on this one, I think they just look absolutely brilliant, I don't know where they are. Looks like they're on a, on a boat, on a building site. There's a 7-up bottle in the corner there, I don't know, but yeah, it's a great, great record that one. And then two... Two that rules make me smile is the Derek Harriet Scrub It Up series. There's two of them, so I just really love the artwork on this. I think that's really good. There it's on the back, and this is almost like dub light in a, in a way. A lot of his uh, Derek Harriet productions are very soulful, and uh, the dubs are soulful as well, but not without interest. You know, they're quite nice background music, really. They're not sort of like your, uh, your fire and brimstone dubs by any stretch of the imagination, but still lovely. And I love um, there's a dub of Solomon I. Um, and I love Guidance on here as well, it's really nice. But there we go, just nice artwork in there, just funny as well. There's that, and let's go for a dub album. So I've gone for one, which I think has still got, I've not played it for ages, so I've got a CD copy of it, which I play in the car. But this is a More Wales um, King Tubby dub me, which is a, just a brilliant Blood and Fire issue. And I think, you know, Blood and Fire took the, uh, the reggae uh, uh, front cover design to a, to a completely different level from anything that had come before it. And since, to be honest, as well. But yeah, this is a there's a limit. There's a five thousand pressing of this one, and yeah, it's just a fantastic heavy dub record. But uh, again, very melodic in places as well from more well, more wells. Uh, but yeah, great, great stuff. Um, show you the label if you're interested. It's a typical Blood and Fire label. With all the tracks on track listings on one side. So yeah, that's, that's cool. Got most of the Blood and Fire stuff. Um, and how I wish they'd just come back. Now a, a record which I wish. Um, was on vinyl, which isn't, would be um, the, the Gay Lads one, the one that's got uh, There's a Fire on it, I what it's called now, Fire and something. But yeah, the one that's got there, There's a Fire on it, I want that reissued on vinyl. I got it on CD. It's come out on one of sort of Dr. Bird reissues on the CD. Um, fire, what's it called? Fire and Rain? I can't remember anyway. Go on, Space Cadet today. Um, and the most recent record I got, which was a recommendation after I did a reggae video last week, uh, a guy uh, commented and said, you know, if you want to get some really nice lovers that you don't hear of so much, it's John McLean. So there we go. This is on a rework, which is my professor's uh, label. 
and this is a wonderful record, very um, very soulful, lovely harmonies on it as well. And on the back, I think it's Carol Thompson, is Carol Thompson on it? Oh no, Sandra Cross, yeah, so Sandra Cross is uh, providing uh, backing vocals on this as well. So that's my most recent one, more in the lover's vein. So there we go, um, I love reggae. I mean, I've got loads of other stuff to show, I'll show you loads of, uh, loads of uh, I could do videos on me pairing the upsetters and uh, on keypads and stuff like that. But uh, there we go. So I hope the vinyl tag continues on reggae and there definitely needs to be more of 